So let us start with the grid and guides and then in the next video we will combine them with snapping to see a bit how to use them all in practice in some concrete cases. So what's the purpose of a grid? Quite simply a grid is a visual reference. It consists of horizontal and vertical lines placed at regular intervals. A grid is just a series of cells that can be squares or in Krita they can also be rectangles like that. Basically you can use it to place icons like that. Well I'm going to increase the subdivisions just to group cells together. Often icons, be it in web design or in games, as far as the UI is concerned, have to be about the same size. And here you can see that each and every icon has to fit a little square. This also applies to graphic design when you have to design vectors for a website, for instance. Having the grid allows me to really ensure that all of the icons follow the same guidelines. And then having the grid also allows me to do that to create some uh, presentation page where you have a 128 pixels gutter around the document and you have the icons in the center. This is the same features I used to design this image, for instance. The icons are aligned thanks to guides and grid uh, in conjunction, in combination together. And this was done in another program, Photoshop. So now, as game artists, there are other use cases that are especially useful. Often, when it comes to creating characters in a game, especially if you are working in pixel art, you might use a character template and you might use a sprite sheet, that is to say a grid of little images like this one in here, to represent your characters and to ensure, just like with the icons, that they are all the same size. In here, I have a simple example, a little uncommon for old school games, but pretty common in uh, modern games made with Unity, for instance. This is a sprite sheet, but it's just here to collect multiple frames from an animation together. This type of image is also used to combine multiple character animations in a single image. You can then use it in your game engine along with a little data file to unpack the animations and use them in your game's code. Then there's another use that's very common in games, which we are going to talk about in the second and third volume of the training, which is tile sets or tile maps. Tile sets are just sets of textures of the same size. So there you can see how the tile set I just showed you is used to produce a level for a game. These little textures you can see in each grid cell have to tile with one another. That's why these are called tile sets. That is to say, if you put one of those textures, if I grab this one, for instance, I can grab it in here. If I put it multiple times in a row, you can see that the transition from one cell to the next is seamless. Using grid, allows us to ensure that we have textures of the same size, then we can use them in our tile map editor, tiled in that case, which is open source as well. It's time for us to look at the grid and its options. So first of all, we have to open the corresponding Docker. You have to go to settings, Docker and grid and guides. Grid and guides are regrouped in the same Docker because, as I told you, they often work in conjunction with one another. The options are quite straightforward. First of all, you can show and hide the grid using the little toggle in here. This corresponds to the option in the view menu called Show Grid. You can also see that there's a default shortcut of Control, Shift and Apostrophe. Second, you have a quick access to the snap to grid that you can toggle. We will see that there's actually another shortcut for that in the next video. Then you can change the spacing of the grid, a spacing that is saved by document. 
So if you set it to 128, in that case, if I save, this data will be saved in the document. You can unlink the two values in order to change the ratio of the grid to create rectangles instead of squares. And by the way, if you set the ratio to something like one and two in that case, and if you lock the proportions, it's going to retain your proportions. When you divide the value in here by two, Krita is going to divide the value below by two as well. So you will have to manually unlink and reset it to a square if you want to work with square cells. Then there is this subdivision value. Right now, what it does is that it groups cells together and changes the look of intermediate lines. Basically, if I set a subdivision value of two, it's going to group cells two by two, and it's going to turn the lines in the middle into lighter lines that we can style down here. Okay, so we are going to set the subdivision to two and divide our value in here by two so that we get the same cell size. There's the possibility to create some kind of grid offset if you want to add a gutter on the top and on the left side of your document. In all honesty, this is something I wouldn't use. However, you have the option. And last but not least, you can style the grid. So you can style the main lines, which are blue in here, you can see. You can change them to be dashed if you prefer, or to dots. I like to have solid lines in that case and you can change the color using Krita's color picker. So if I set them to red, for instance, you can see what it gives us. I like to use either blue or orange in that case. I'm going to stay with blue. And you have the subdivision lines, which are set with the subdivision parameter. If you have no subdivision, you won't see them. But if you start to group cells together, you will. And in that case, you can have a secondary style for these. So you can choose to make them solid, uh, dashed or dotted, just like the main lines, and you can pick another color for them. All right, that's it for the grid. That's quite simple. Now, the grid alone isn't too interesting. So we are going to talk about the guide. 